In the year 1971, over half a century ago, the world lost Pete Duell. His journey in the world of acting was abruptly curtailed by a tragic demise that occurred at a tender age, leaving an indelible mark on those who knew him. Yet, even now, nearly 50 years after that fateful event, Pete's enigmatic life and lasting impact continue to captivate the collective imagination. A man of remarkable talent and profound emotions, his elegance and intellectual prowess set him apart, especially his unyielding passion for his craft. Born as Peter Elstrom Duell on the 24th day of February in 1940, the city of Rochester, New York, welcomed him into the world. In the embrace of the Duell family, Pete was the eldest among the surviving siblings in a trio cherished by his parents, Dr. Ellsworth Schott Bob Duell and Lillian Marcella Duell. Lillian, with her Swedish-American heritage, Helen from Altoona, Pennsylvania, held the family's heart close. Alongside Pete, Joffrey Jacob, a younger brother, and Pamela, a sister, formed the familial constellation. Yet, amidst this tapestry of life, a fleeting moment of sorrow arrived when Jennifer, a baby girl, entered and departed the world within a day on September 12, 1952. In the quiet town of Penfield, nestled outside Rochester, Pete's father, Dr. Duell, practiced medicine. His healing touch resided within the family abode, aided by Lillian, who, as a nurse, shared her expertise. An ancestral thread of medical vocation ran through the Duell lineage, connecting father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, not to mention two kin as well, all physicians by calling. A legacy paved for Pete, inviting him to embrace the path trodden by generations past. However, destiny's allure directed him elsewhere, and he embarked on a different journey. Peter Duell's educational path took him through Penfield High School, where he accomplished his graduation in 1957. During his teenage years, a deep-seated dream brewed within Pete, the aspiration to soar as a pilot. With resolute intent, he originally set his course to join the United States Air Force immediately upon reaching the eligible age. The turning point arrived at 17 when he ventured to the Air Force recruitment office, driven by the desire to undergo pilot training. Yet, the fate of 2030 vision denied him entry, a setback he addressed with reading glasses, a fixture he wore when not gracing the stage. By the autumn of 1957, the hallowed halls of St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York, beckoned to Pete, where he embraced the pursuit of liberal arts. The wintry month of December led him back to his Penfield roots, a cherished break awaited. A fateful night neared the vacation's end, and within a swirling snowstorm, Pete and a companion embarked on a journey. Destiny took an unforeseen twist, resulting in a head-on collision. From the passenger's side windshield, Pete was ejected, bearing the brunt of head injuries, facial lacerations, and an almost severed tongue. The battle against his wounds was fought within the confines of a hospital room for a month, followed by a rehabilitation period on crutches in the nurturing embrace of his parents' home. As the academic chapters unfolded within St. Lawrence University, the allure of the stage called out to Pete. College theatrical productions, including a noteworthy portrayal of the lead role in Tennessee Williams's The Rose Tattoo, unveiled his thespian talents. Witnessed by his supportive parents, the performance's impact was undeniable. Dr. Duell, recognizing the potential, advocated for his son's journey to New York City, a mecca for aspiring actors. It was in 1966 that Pete's voice resonated through the corridors of TV photo stories. His sentiments lay in bare. I am enamored with the art of acting. For me, it's a serious profession, devoid of frivolity. Glamour takes a backseat to dedication. The show's essence is paramount, he expressed with unwavering conviction. In the year 1960, a young Pete relocated to the bustling streets of the Big Apple, a humble life awaited him within the halls of YMCA, where he diligently worked to make ends meet by cleaning hallways and bathrooms, a testament to his tenacity. Soon, he secured a spot in the prestigious two-year program 
at the American Theater Wing is dedication culminating in completion by 1962. There, he immersed himself in the intricacies of stagecraft, embracing Shakespearean drama, speech refinement, elocution, dance, and even the arts of fencing. Summer thespian engagements and an off-Broadway appearance in Electra at the Greenwich Village Players Theater peppered his journey. The spotlight beckoned him onto the esteemed CBS show, The Armstrong Circle Theater. In the summer of 1963, Pete's path led him across the continent to West Hollywood, California. The journey was spurred by his involvement with the National Road Company's production of the Broadway comedy Take Her, She's Mine. The silver screen witnessed his debut in the role of Josh Drake on the college drama series Channing. This marked the beginning of a series of guest appearances on iconic shows like Combat, Gomer Pyle, USMC, The Fugitive, and 12 O'Clock High. Pete's initial breakthrough on television emerged in the form of the short-lived series Gidget, starring alongside Sally Field. As John Cooper, Gidget's affectionate yet slow-witted psychology student brother-in-law, Pete's charm shone through in 23 of the show's 32 episodes from 1965 to 1966. The show's demise was scripted by low ratings, yet Pete's journey continued. Love on a Rooftop paired him with Judy Carn, a collaboration that spanned all 30 episodes of its sole season from 1966 to 1967. The Tides of Fate brought Pete to Universal Studios in July 1967, solidifying his position in the entertainment industry. Feature films and guest roles became the canvas of his craft. A pair of TV movies, How to Steal an Airplane and The Scarecrow, etched his versatility. Notably, Pete's Western aptitude flourished in episodes of The Virginian, a harbinger of his most iconic role yet. In 1971, the spotlight found him as the outlaw Hannibal Hayes, also known as Joshua Smith, in Alias Smith and Jones, a Western imbued with the spirit of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This lighthearted show, shared with co-star Ben Murphy as Jed Kid Curry, revolved around the premise of an amnesty granted to the duo if they remained on the right side of the law for a year while keeping their true identities hidden behind aliases of Smith and Jones. On a fateful day, October 24, 1970, Hollywood streets bore witness to a grave car crash involving Pete Duell. Two individuals were harmed in the incident. Arrest followed suspicions of drunk driving and hit-and-run cast upon Pete. Yet, the charge of hit-and-run was eventually dismissed. As June 21, 1971 dawned, Pete stood before the Santa Monica Superior Court, admitting guilt to drunk driving leading to an accident. The verdict brought a prison sentence and a $1,000 fine, the latter waived. A suspended driver's license hung over him, but the bars were evaded as he vowed to forsake alcohol, a pledge he battled to uphold. However, Pete's struggle with alcoholism persisted, despite his attempts through Alcoholics Anonymous. The weight of his commitments and his role in Alias Smith & Jones bore heavy culminating in exhaustion's collapse on set in August 1971. Though sent home, he returned the next day. Later, November brought a telegram of disappointment, a seat on the Screen Actors Guild's board of directors unattained. The telegram found its place on his wall, a poignant reminder of perceived inadequacy. Surface appearances painted Pete as a charismatic actor, starring in a hit series and linked to a young love named Diane Ray. Their paths intertwined during The Psychiatrist, where she served as a production assistant. However, beneath this veneer, Pete battled internal demons, his drinking problem casting long shadows of anguish. His autopsy would later reveal an alcohol-heavy consumption before December 31, 1971. On that fateful daybreak, the Hollywood Hills held a tragic secret. Pete Duell was found dead, a gunshot wound to his head. While the origin of the shot remained unclear, the proximity of the gun muzzle to his ear revealed intimate proximity. Detective Sergeant Paul Estrada's words 
echoed skepticism regarding another's involvement. Pete's age, a mere 31 years, marked his untimely passing. Insights from those close to Pete unveiled his torment over his drinking. Further discoveries uncovered a second bullet in his home, one aged about a week. The gun that took his life had also punctuated the framed telegram he held dear, a tangible emblem of his unfulfilled aspirations within the Screen Actors Guild. Rest in peace and farewell, Peter Duell. Peter 